असतो मद्गमया तमसो मोतिर्गमया मृत्योर्मृतंगमया ओ शाति शाति शांति दीपावली और दिवाली इज द फेस्टिवल ऑफ लाइट्स एंड वॉट अ ब्लेसिंग फ्रॉम भगवान दैट फॉर दैट एज वेल वी आर सिटिंग एंड कॉन्टेम्पलेटिंग ऑन द थीम तमसोमा ज्योतिर गमया फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ दीपावली और दिवाली देर आर मल्टीपल स्टोरीज बट द टू मोस्ट पॉपुलर वन एंड two most inspiring ones are from the treta yuga and from the dwapara yuga so in the treta yuga it is said that it's on this day lord shri rama returned to ayodhya with mother sita lakshmana and the entire vanara army the monkey army they all came to ayodhya they wanted to participate in the coronation of lord shri rama and the residents the denizens of ayodhya were so happy they lit lamps throughout the streets the roads the lanes the by lanes hoping for lord shri rama to walk through them there was no electricity those days it used to be by lamps and deepavali means a row of lamps they lit a row of lamps because they felt light was coming back to ayodhya you know on the vijayadashmi day which was about a fortnight before that is the day lord shri rama killed the demon king ravana so it took him a fortnight to complete all the visa formalities and other things at uh, <laughs> lanka possibly and then he flew he flew to ayodhya in the pushpaka vimana but yeah he had so many other formalities to complete there he had to crown vibhishana there was a examination a test that mother sita had to undergo not the nt pcr or not the rt pcr not the covid test but she had to undergo the agni pariksha so having completed all that and the visa formalities lord shri ram arrived to ayodhya 14 days a fortnight later and that is the deepavali day the other significance from the dwapara yuga is that this is the day when lord krishna killed narakasura and freed up 16000 women who were in his clutches in his who were captured by him in fact these are the 16000 wives of lord shri krishna it's not exactly like the husband and wife that we speak about but those women who had lost everything in life said lord we have nobody you are our lord pati pati also means lord jagat pati doesn't mean husband of the world jagat pati means lord of the world pati also means husband so they said lord you are our pati you are our master you are our lord and lord krishna accepted them as swami would say dikku leni vaadi ki devude dikku meaning for those that don't have any other solace and support god is there as the support this saying that makes me emotional swami would say that you know in one of his discourses swami said you keep speaking of anatha anatha literally means orphan but actually anatha means one who doesn't have a natha natha meaning the lord so swami would say nobody in this world is an anatha nobody is an orphan because everybody has a natha everybody has the lord the god is there for each and every one you just have to need him to deserve him just cry out and tell swami he will say ye me say sai he will say oi <laughs> you know oi and ye me ye me in telugu means what what are you calling me for oi means yes did you call me this is what swami himself says so swami would say that nobody is an anatha nobody is an orphan if at all there is any anatha if at all there is anyone without the lord it is the lord himself he has no lord for him and therefore swami would say god is the only anatha in this whole universe so deepavali is that day when light enters our life 
lightness enters light enters brightness enters it is the triumph of light over darkness it is the triumph of good over evil it's a triumph of immortality over death i would like all of you to just think of deepavali or think of fireworks you know some of us might not be familiar with diwali or deepavali but all of us will definitely be familiar with fireworks close your eyes for a moment and think of fireworks what is the image that comes in your mind one image is possibly of the night sky that is lit up brightly with all these bursting crackers they burst into beautiful clouds of multiple colors either that or we visual beautiful colored firecrackers on the ground you will notice that whatever be our visualization it will always be against the backdrop of darkness we never think of fireworks during the day we just can't think we don't know how it is to have fireworks in the day i would really be surprised if any of you thought of fireworks if the image in your mind i mean when i said imagine fireworks if you had imagined a daytime fireworks if you did so you are a very very rare specimen i feel because any number of people whom i have asked to imagine fireworks it's a nightly scene that comes this is something very significant it is significant because whether we believe it or not whether we accept it or not we are able to appreciate light only against a backdrop of darkness we can move into light we can appreciate light we can understand light we can feel thrilled by light only if we have known darkness that is why the journey is from darkness to light because without darkness we won't know the meaning of light we won't be able to appreciate light that is why in another of his popular example swami says that kunti the mother of the pandavas when she got the opportunity to seek a boon from lord krishna she sought something very very strange here is a mother who has gone through hardships all her life even though she is a queen she has been separated from her children for 14 years when they were in exile they had to go together in exile and even after that there was a bloody war having gone through all these difficulties when lord krishna is finally asking kunti what does she want she says lord fill my life with hardships because it's only in times of hardships that i remember you swami would give this example and say na sukhat labhyate sukham you will never get joy from joy you will never get light from light it's only in the darkness that we are able to see light imagine something is so pitch dark the tiniest flickering light from a firefly when i had recently been to kurg it was a dark night i was sitting outside in the balcony just taking in the beautiful calmness of nature at night there were the crickets chirping and suddenly i saw some lights flickering and it was a thrill for me that's when i realized these are fireflies it felt so beautiful it felt as if they were in a dance i would never have seen them during the day it is the darkness that makes it possible for us to see light and it is this darkness that brings to our heart the joy and delight that is there in light you know whenever i speak or whenever i even think about moving from darkness to light i cannot help but recollect the experience of dr t ravi kumar my teacher my chemistry teacher during my undergraduate and postgraduate days and my teacher for life even to this day any time when i have to take an important step in life any time when i am worried any time i am feeling low i call him up because these are the teachers who are true teachers they teach you not only about living they teach you about life Ravi Kumar sir has been so inspirational for me in how we should love swami 
Every time he speaks about Swami, his eyes become moist. His voice becomes so tender and choked. And just witnessing it, I feel envious. I feel Swami, whether or not I get experiences that he has experienced. I want to love you like this Swami. Thinking of you, I want tenderness to enter my heart Swami. I want tears to fill my eyes Swami. I want to just feel your love by just taking your name Swami. So his experience is phenomenal. You know, it is actually in three parts. And let me narrate them in the chronological order. I might get the exact dates and time wrong, but the chronology will be right. The order will be right. I think it was sometime in 1979 when Sir completed his junior college and he had to go to the Shri Krishna Devaraya University, SKU as they call, in Anantpur to pursue his post-graduation. But even as he did post-graduation there, every week or every fortnight, whenever possible, he would rush to have Swami's darshan. And once when he came to have Swami's darshan, all his other brothers who were there said, Hey, Swami was speaking about you. Oh, what was he speaking about? We are planning to put up a drama. I forget the name. I think it was Kingdom of Heaven. For Christmas possibly. Which naturally involves Jesus Christ. And in that, Swami was deciding the roles for different students. For one particular role, Swami said, Let Ravi do this role. And what was that role? That role was of a blind beggar boy who comes to Jesus Christ and seeks vision. And Christ asks him, Do you have faith that I can grant you vision? And the boy says, the lad says, Yes, you will grant me vision. And Christ says, Go on. Your darkness is banished. You will see there will be light in your eyes. Don't tell this to anyone. And the boy goes and tells it to the whole world. And we are talking about that experience even today. That role was something that he was picked to do. The significance of that, he understood only several years later. Maybe a couple of years later, you know, he completed his post-graduation. Swami appointed him as a teacher. And he was doing his research, doctorate at Prashantinilyam Puttaparthi. And as he was working in the chemistry lab, an unfortunate accident happened. That was the day when, because of an accident, concentrated sulfuric acid, you know, sulfuric acid is called the king among acids, tipped into his eyes. And it was burning and he began to shout out. In fact, his fellow brother, a classmate, a friend had told him, let's go to the hostel for lunch. And he had told him, you proceed, I shall just come in 10 minutes. He had not even left the chemistry lab when he heard Ravi Kumar shout out. So he ran back in and he was clutching his eyes, saying this acid has gone in. They rushed to the tap, opened it. Unfortunately, because of some plumbing work going on in an adjacent building, the water connection had been shut. There was no water in the taps and there's acid in the eyes. They rushed to the general hospital only to find out that the ophthalmologist, the eye doctor, in order to renew the visa or something had, had gone out of station, was not there. So they were told, you please proceed immediately to Bangalore. There's nothing that can be done here. At that time, Ravi Kumar sir said, no, let's not go to Bangalore. Let's go. Let's, it's almost time for Darshan. Let's have Darshan. I want to see Swami. Ravi Kumar actually wanted to have Darshan in the sense that I hope I can see Swami at least. Even if I can't see anything else in life. Went and sat in the Darshan hall. Nothing. It was pitch black, dark. When Swami came, 
It was a friend who was describing Swami is now walking, Swami is coming here. And Ravi Kumar sir had tears from those eyes. Swami, I wanted to serve you all my life. Now I am in a situation where I need somebody to serve me all my life. Oh God, what has happened now? When Swami came close to him, some of the elders who were there told Swami what had happened. Swami came to him and reassured him. Swami said, don't worry. Here, take these three packets of vibhuti. Take one immediately. Take one packet daily. It will be fine. Don't worry. Taking strength from what Swami had said, Ravi Kumar sir went back to the hostel. Daily he would take a packet of vibhuti. Three days passed. The dosage was done. The three packets had been consumed. Yet it was all dark. It was not the darkness of the night. It was the darkness of the sight. He was yet not able to see anything. And that night he broke down. He broke down. Not because of anything else. But simply because of the fact that I am not able to see Swami. I will not be able to see Swami. Yes, Swami is God. Swami is divine. Even if we are not able to see Him, we can feel Him, we can experience Him. But seeing Him is a joy. Don't we agree? That is a joy that we miss so much these days. We experience Him. He is there all around us. He is there helping us. The moment we cry out to Him, He comes to our aid immediately. And yet, and yet Swami, when will we see you? When will we behold that beautiful form? As he cried himself to sleep that night, the next day morning, he wakes up. He wakes up and he sees that one of his friends has come to deliver coffee to him and keeps coffee or tea on the table there. He gets up, sits on his bed and greets his friend. And the friend looks at him and says, Tell me, what dress am I wearing? And Ravi Kumar sir says, What a strange question to ask. You are wearing a grey track pant and a cream t-shirt. You can see! You can see! You are able to see! And that's when it strikes. It strikes Ravi Kumar sir that, Yes, I am able to see. I am able to see. I slept in the night without my sight. And I wake up in the morning and true to Swami's word, the world runs on his word, dear brothers and sisters. Swami's word is the method, is the system, is the rule on which the entire world runs on. Ravi Kumar sir was able to see the thrill he felt in his heart, the joy he felt surging in his being. That evening when he went to Darshan, his eyes were speaking eloquently because his mouth was dumbstruck. His eyes were expressing gratitude through copious tears to Swami. But what does Swami tell him? Swami tells him seriously, buy a pair of goggles, wear them and be careful next time. That made him feel nervous. When Swami says, be careful next time, it means that there is going to be a next time. He ensured that he would never be in the chemistry lab without his safety goggles. Everyone would be wearing these safety goggles. He too would be wearing. Even by mistake, he would not allow them to come off. And this went on for a couple of years. Then one day, he was about to finish a very critical experiment. I say critical because it had been running for the past 2-3 months and if he didn't complete it on that day, the whole thing had to be redone and this was also critical because this would be the one that would decide him getting his doctorate, doctoral degree from Swami. If he missed it, he would have to wait one more year for that. So no way he was going to wait. But as he did this experiment on that particular day, his goggles fell and broke. 
immediately he remembered Swami's words. Be careful next time. He said, yes, I'm going to be extremely careful. He did the setup and he put on the vacuum pump that had newly arrived from Japan. It was a new pump. The suction was so much. And the whole apparatus imploded. It imploded and this time it was not sulfuric acid. It was something much more powerful. It was chromic acid, black, fuming, 80 degrees, almost boiling. And it flew into both his eyes. This time there was water in the taps. But the burning was so intense. How much ever water he kept putting, the burning didn't cease. He could feel holes in his clothes and his lab coat wherever the acid drops had fallen. Rushed to the general hospital. This time the doctor was there. The doctor took the friend aside and the friend came back and said, It's all fine, Ravi. It's all fine. But if you wish, we can go to Bangalore. Now, this got him very suspicious. He knew it was not all fine. Because it was burning, it was black, felt like hell, darkness and burning. And why to go to Bangalore if all is well? He said, see Swami is going to ask me, what did the doctor say? Because my eyes have been bandaged now. When he sees me like this, he'll ask what happened, what did the doctor say? I will have to tell him what the doctor said. So please tell me what the doctor said. That's when the friend revealed. The doctor said that you shouldn't be disappointed or become despondent or depressed. That's why just go to Bangalore to seek another opinion. But according to the doctor, there's nothing left of your eyes there. There's nothing that can be done because there's nothing that's left. You know, even though you cannot shed tears, the heart can still cry. And Ravi Kumar sir was now weeping at his heart. He wasn't even able to weep with his eyes. There was nothing left there. Swami, you made me fine once. And, and what is what have I done? What has happened? Oh my God. And Swami had even warned him. Not once, twice. Once was a very early warning when he gave him the role of that blind beggar boy. So significant. This time when they went to Mandir, it was tied. The bandage was there and Swami came straight to him. What happened? What happened? But even as Swami asked what happened, Swami immediately changed his expression. And this Ravi Kumar sir made out from the tone because he couldn't see those expressions. Swami said, I told you to be careful. I told you to be careful. Then Swami materialized Vibhuti because Swami asked for him to show his hand. Put Vibhuti in his hand and said, don't worry. Just relax, it will all be fine. Do whatever the doctor has said. So he ate the Vibhuti. The bandage was around his eyes. He went back to the hostel. The next day morning when they went to the hospital, the doctor had to undress this bandage to tie a new bandage. And even as the doctor undressed the bandage, brothers and sisters, can you believe it? Ravi Kumar sir is sitting there and seeing the doctor in his eyes. The glory of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord. But the doctor doesn't know this. Huh? So he's examining the eye. Again, checking once more. And then saying, I think I need to get my eyes checked. <laughs> because there was nothing there yesterday. Today there's nothing wrong here. Tamas Oma Jyotir Gamaya. Lead me from darkness to light. And today, that Ravi Kumar sir narrates this incident and many, many more, lighting up so many lives 
He is like that candle which Swami has lit. And that candle flame can light up a million candle flames without losing its own flame. I am definitely one of those candles that have been lit, lit by the flame from Ravi Kumar sir. So beautiful as he shares this incident. So, the light that comes at the end of darkness is something that we appreciate so much. The background of darkness is needed. When dark clouds fill your skies, hiding sunshine from your eyes, say his name, see his form, hold on. Hold on, Sai Ram. Say his name, see his form. Hold on. Let us not get discouraged. Let us not despair. However dark the night, it's always darkest before dawn. It is definitely darkest before dawn. So, I mean, thinking of that, let us cheer up. This too shall pass. When I say darkness, the darkness can take many forms. Despondency, despair, dejection, disappointment, sorrow. Yes, we'll cry out to Swami, but let us remember that Swami will never let go. He will bring in light one way or the other. Because He loves us. He loves us. And why does He love us? No reason for love. No season for love. In the same context, I also remember the experience of another teacher, another devotee. She too studied at the Shri Krishna Devara University at some point in time. She taught at the Anantpur campus of the Sri Satsai Institute of High Learning. The difference is, Ms. Rama Devi, Rama Devi was born without vision. So she did not even know what it means to have sight. You understand, right? It is one thing when you lose your sight. You feel the pain of what you have lost. Here you don't even know what it means. As a child, you never know what, what is the meaning of sight. And that leads to a lot of confusion because everyone around you is able to see. And unless you experience what is sight, you don't understand the meaning of sight. And therefore you are not able to understand so many descriptions. Understand so many things that your peers are speaking. But Rama ma'am was blessed to have a lovely family, a supportive family, a wonderful grandfather. Who taught her that all was not lost. It took her several years to understand that she was visually impaired. That there are colors, that there are textures, that there are things, that there is something called sight. As she grew up, she was blessed to have studied in a very, very supportive primary school and higher secondary school. And her grandfather brought, up, brought her up with a lot of spiritual moorings and spiritual leanings as well. She loved God, she loved Krishna. Though she has never seen, not even seen the image or picture because she has to build her own image through descriptions. Think of this brothers and sisters, even when we build images in our mind. Now suppose today I close my eyes and somebody is describing to me something that I have never seen. I have references of a million things that I have already seen. So somebody can tell me that it is sharp like a needle or it is flat as the ground or white, bright like the sun, white like the moon, looking like milk. You know, based on the things that we have seen, we can build up descriptions of things that we have not seen. Just imagine building up descriptions based on, on what? Based on what you have experienced of what people are saying. It's very, very, very difficult for us 
who have been able to see to even imagine. But that's how she grew up. She learned Braille. She did all her studies in Braille. And then her elder sister, Bharati, got appointment as a teacher in the Anandpur campus of the university. And she told her sister that for your higher education, you should come and join this college. This is not an ordinary college. It is God's college. This was the first time she is hearing all this. But she said, yes, let me join. She joined. She joined Swami's college at Anandpur. And a year later, her elder sister actually left. She got married and moved on. She continued to stay. One of the things that the elder sister's role as an instrument of Bhagwan was to get Ramadevi into the college. Once she joined the college, it wasn't an easy life. But she had Swami guiding her. Swami came and told her, in fact told everybody around, Swami said, all of you will get distracted by what you see. You will watch movies, you will watch a thousand other things. She has no such distractions. She will focus on Swami and studies and she will do very well. That is the blessing that Swami pronounced on her. And holding on to those words of Swami, Ramadevi continued her education. She did pretty well in her undergraduation courses. And then she had to do Masters of English, you know, postgraduate course. It wasn't there at Anandpur. And she was wondering whether she should stop studies at this point in time. Why to pursue any further studies? But no. Swami speaking to her grandmother and herself said, No, you should do your master's degree. But Swami, where do I do it? It's not there in the college. Swami said there's a postgraduate college. Shri Krishna Devaraya University College at Anandpur. Do it there. Swami, where do I stay? Swami said, stay in my hostel. Stay in my hostel, study in another college, no problem. That is Swami's love, you know. There are rules. But there is no rule beyond love. Love knows no rules. Love rules. Where love, where love rules, there are no rules. And Swami is waiting only for that love. That's all. Dear brothers and sisters, you know, that's all it is. I don't know what it is to have divine love. I don't know what it means. But, but I know this much that once we have that love for Swami, nothing else is there in life to be achieved. And that's all we need to yearn for. That's all we need to pine for. Swami, let the love that is in my heart towards you, let it grow every moment. Let it grow stronger every moment. That's all. Let's yearn for that. Let's pine for that. Because as I said, Love rules. <laughs> when you when love rules, you need not have love for rules. <laughs> so an exception was made. Not just for Ramadevi Madam, but for all her classmates. All of them are staying at the Anandpur hostel, studying in another college. Swami said, I will help you in your studies, don't worry. This was very, very important because it was very discouraging. Forget books being available in Braille. There were no books. There were no books in Braille. How does she study? She has to listen. All of her classmates, 70% of them did not know proper English as well. How does she make notes? How does she study? It was very discouraging. She went to two, three mentors and all of them said, it's better you stop your education now. Why do you want to study further? Forget the master's course. It was very, very, very discouraging. Till one person, one person told her, Listen, Swami has said that he will study. He will help you in your studies. Why do you worry? Don't lose your confidence. Dear brothers and sisters, we come across situations in life where we feel it is so difficult. But we feel that because we need to learn. 
we feel like giving up because we lack self confidence and self confidence is nothing but a reflection of our faith in swami if i believe that there is nothing impossible for swami and if i believe that there is swami within me how can i not have self confidence i am not preaching here dear brothers and sisters i am speaking this loudly and thumpingly so that it gets into my own heart and head because i too suffer from a lack of self confidence and i realize that that is nothing but a reflection of my lack of faith in swami that's all swami is there swami will never let go of us we possibly need reminders of this but let us never forget it let us remind ourselves of the same so this well wisher told rama devi that swami has said he will study swami has said he will help you why are you worried go ahead march on and she indeed marched on now interestingly that year those two years swami conducted the summer course in indian culture and spirituality at brindavan bangalore and the first year rama devi attended i think this is 1976 or 77 she attended only the inaugural session because it's so difficult to live in the hostel where students from all the campuses are there you have to get up almost in the middle of the night to have bath and get ready how do you face those difficulties so she just felt that it would be very difficult but the next year one of her classmates said i will help you and take care of you you stay experience the summer course it's amazing she felt that that was a nudge from swami many times we are waiting for swami to come into our life we miss the different forms through which he comes into our life he comes through the loving words of your parents or your friends or your spouse or your children even your children he comes he comes in various forms he says that i am present in everything and therefore see me in everything i will come when you call i will come that is my promise that is swami's promise and so when we call him out with all our heart if we feel he hasn't come it's because we missed let's go back and search again he will be there he cannot but come he will come his word it is he will never fail his word swami always comes we miss him sometimes to so swami taking this these words of her friend as words from swami she decided to go and attend the summer course it was difficult no doubt but it was filled with delight again as swami says na sukhat labhyate sukham through happiness you don't get more happiness it's only through difficulties that you get more happiness so don't be shy to go through difficulties yes we feel fear yes we feel nervous but let's march ahead knowing that what is the worst that can happen swami is in my heart swami will not let go of me what else the worst that can happen is we losing swami if we don't lose swami as long as swami is with us hell becomes heaven any difficult situation becomes a beautiful situation that is what swami does to us so as long as we are firm in our faith that swami is with us why do we worry she studied some of course is a course at the end of which you have to even give an examination and she got to know that if you achieve more than 50% of the marks you will receive your certificate from swami's hands and so she decided that i will study your brothers and sisters even you know i think i i let go of the secret even before i speak because i get emotional forgive me being emotional but you know it's such a magnificent thing when you take one step towards swami swami takes a hundred rama devi not just got more than 50% she could hear her name being announced by bhagwantam dr bhagwantam who said the top rank has been secured by a student who doesn't have vision rama devi is the first ranker for this summer course just imagine topping an examination 
for which you are so ill-equipped. That is Swami. That is Swami's grace. And she achieved it. She later was appointed as a teacher. Swami appointed her as a teacher as well. Yes, Swami never gave back her physical eyesight. But oh my goodness, she has no regrets. She is so happy. In fact, Swami once told her, don't ever feel bad that you are not able to have Swami's darshan. Because Swami's darshan is not through the physical eyes. Swami's darshan happens when there is clarity and love in the mind and heart. When there is clarity in the mind, when there is love in the heart, that's when you have Swami's darshan. And you are able to have Swami's darshan always. This is the light. The light is not the light of the eyes, but the light of wisdom that dawns. And clears away the darkness of ignorance. What is ignorance? Anytime we feel that Swami is not with us. Anytime we feel lonely. Anytime we feel despondent. Anytime we feel frustrated. Anytime we feel angry. That is ignorance. Because we are feeling all of those. Because we have forgotten that Swami is with us. And now I am getting tears. Because I am reminded of so many occasions. Where, where I have forgotten this. Just imagine when I'm feeling frustrated, if I if I'm able to see Swami by my side, will I ever have frustration? Swami is there saying, don't worry, you're Amritasya Putra. You are a child of immortality. You're my child. You're my friend. I am with you. What can be impossible for you? Nothing is impossible for you. I'm there with you. Don't forget that. Don't forget it. In fact, I feel Swami's anguish that we have forgotten Him is much more than our anguish that we are not able to feel Him. Just call me, Swami says, just call me. I am as far as your call can reach. I am there by your side always, always. For this satsang, I didn't keep a picture of Swami beside me. Purposely, because I want it to get into my head and heart. Whether I am able to see Swami with my eyes or not, when there is love for Swami in my heart, Swami is by my side. Swami is in me. Swami is above me. Swami is below me. Swami is around me. Swami is me when I am able to feel His love. That's all. That is the light that we have to move into. The light of love. When we examine the life of another great lover of God who was born blind, Surdas. He was born without sight. And yet, and yet, listening to his compositions of Lord Krishna, many devotees of Lord Krishna are able to visualize Krishna. Do you see the paradox there? Do you see the paradox? Here is a devotee of the Lord who cannot see the Lord because he doesn't have eyesight. And yet his descriptions of the Lord are bringing alive the form of the Lord in front of so many minds, eyes of so many devotees. Huh? That is what love for the Lord can do. That is the true light that we have to seek, the light of love. In fact, when Surdas falls into a well, he calls out for help. A little boy comes. A little boy comes and puts a stick. Pulls out Surdas from the well. Who is this little boy? Krishna. Surdas doesn't know. He cannot see. He says, thank you, my little boy. What's your name? And the boy says, my name is Gopal. Oh, Gopal. You know, I love Gopal. What do you do, Gopal? Grandfather, I take care of cows. I take them out in the morning for grazing. I herd them and get them back in the evening. Oh, how interesting. My Gopal also does the same. 
I love you, my little child. And he pats the head of the child and feels the peacock feather. When he feels the peacock feather, he tries to catch him. And Krishna runs away. But Sudha bursts into a song. Bah chudaye jat ho Nibal jaan ke mohe Hirday se jab jau to Sabal me jaanu to Surdas bursts out into a song saying, Oh Krishna, you think you are strong because you can let go of my hand and run away. But I will consider you strong only if you are able to leave my heart. You can't leave my heart, Krishna. I have captured you here. You can't leave my heart. Yes, Krishna couldn't leave Surdas's heart. In fact, legend goes that Krishna appears before Surdas and grants him vision. And when he grants him vision, Krishna... Surdas cries out, Krishna. And he is able to see his Krishna for the first time. Krishna says, ye me, what? Swami, ye me. Huh? When you call out the Lord, ask, what do you want? And Suza says, Lord, take away my eyesight. I don't want these eyes. Why? Because Lord, I am able to see you. But I am able to see the world as well. When I didn't have these eyes, I saw only you. I want to see only you, Swami. I want to see only you, Krishna. So please let me not get distracted. Don't distract me. Take away my eyes. And that is how Surdas remained blind in the worldly sense, but continued to see his Krishna. One of my brothers, Ranganath Raju, he had asked Swami, Swami, what is the root cause of attraction? And Swami said, the root cause of attraction is the sight. Yes, the eyes are very powerful. They get us attracted, they get us attached. Let us ensure that they fall on only that which is worthy of getting attached to. Worthy of getting attracted to. That is Swami. But you know something interesting? When Swami told Brother Ranganath Raju that it is your sight that attracts you to something, Swami didn't point to his eyes. Swami pointed to the heart. What does that mean? That means that vision is not through the eyes. Vision is through the heart. We are attracted to what our heart sets its eyes upon. That is the light that we have to seek. When we move from darkness to light, it is from the darkness of ignorance to the light of wisdom through the light of love. That is what is the significance of the Avatarhood Declaration Day. Swami wanted us to move to love. That's why all his life from that day onwards, from the Avatarhood Declaration Day onward, Swami addressed us as Prema Swarupalara, embodiments of divine love. That is the significance of Deepavali. That is the significance of the prayer Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya. Swami, may we move from darkness to the light of your love. May our love for you keep growing every moment. May we love you more and more. May we be able to see you in everything that our eyes behold, that our heart experiences. May you fill our universe. May you become our universe. May there be no separation between you and us. Between you and me. Thank you. Jai Sai Ram.